Dun 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 Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Marilyn Darling Show. <clears throat> and welcome to another episode of Inky Fingers. Today I received a question. <clears throat> Asking me to do a comparison video between the Boinga Boinga and the Zebra G nib, dip nib, fountain pen thing. Hello, how are you all doing today? <coughs> I have a very sore throat, and I don't know why. I haven't done anything, I haven't been anywhere. And anyway, the show must go on, right? So, today we're going to be looking at a shootout between the Boinga Boinga and the Zebra G Nib. Thanks go out to Rene Peron for asking this question. She asks, How does it compare to the Zebra G Nib? which looked almost as flexible in the video. Did you purchase the nib and add it to the one of your pens? I've heard of the Zebra G rusts. I've been afraid of them for that reason. So, <clears throat> as you know, or as you, if you don't know, I did purchase this nib from our dear fr pen friend, Pierre Gustafson. I had a, it came with a nib already in it, but the problem with the nib that I have, that came with this pen is, oh, that's not the one, or is it? Pierre sent me a couple nibs to try out. Oh yes, it was the one. So he, the, this is the one that came with it, and it's very flexible and everything, but it did come with a little tiny crack. Or maybe I made a tiny crack, I can't tell. Plus, it's a very broad nib. So Pierre sent me this flexible gold nib, which is very stiff, and he's, uh, he also sent me this nib, which we have co colloquially called Boinga Boinga because it is very flexy. In this day and age, it would be referred to as a wet noodle. <clears throat> Now let's take a look at the Zebra G nib. This is the Zebra G nib in an Ackerman pump pen. If you've never seen a Zebra G nib before, let's see if I can find one. Probably not in that one. Let me see. Let me see. Do, 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 do. do I have a Zebra G nib by itself? Is it busy? No. Oh, it's in the pen, that's why. I'm like, why can't I find my Zebra G nib? It's because it's in the pen. Okay, so... I'll just break out a new one so you can look at it. So this is a Zebra G nib. And it is too... It is very flexible. Now, people's complaints about these pen, these nibs is, oh, they rust. This is not a fountain pen nib. However, they do make pens in the world <coughs> that do look and feel kind of like fountain pens. This one has a reservoir in it, and it has a little rubber sack right here that when I depress it, if 
we look very closely, you will see it pushes down the ink towards the nib. Okay, and that enables it to write. What is the difference between the Zebra Dew nib and the, the Boinga Boinga? <clears throat> I've had this nib in this pen for about a month or so. And I would say that for the price, this is a $60 nib. Okay, yes, it's very flexible. It's probably a more than a hundred years old. But this here is a dollar nib. And it has about the same amount of flexibility. So Okay. I would say that they are about the same amount of flexibility, but the the Ackerman pump pen has a very unique feed system there is a metal tube there or there's a plastic tube that runs down the middle of this <clears throat> it's not like any other feed where you have fins there's no fins on this feed at all it's just a channel a very large channel that goes down the middle of that section let's take a look at the waterman feed the Waterman feed has a very large channel, very large channel that goes down the middle of that feed all the way down to the nib where it comes up right there just underneath this part of the nib. Now, if we look at a, a normal fountain pen, where are my fountain pens? If we look at a normal fountain pen, let's look at we'll look at this one just because you will see there is a very, very tiny channel compared to a vintage fountain pen feed. There is a lot of ink being pushed up towards the nib where you have to depend on capillary action to move the, the ink from one fin to the next. <clears throat> Where this one, it just rushes to the end and stops right there. So I hope that that is a little bit more ex ex explanative. You know, you know what I mean. I hope that that explains what the difference is between <clears throat> having a modern pen and a, a vintage pen. When it comes to putting a vintage nib in a modern pen, you do not get the same amount of flow. The flow is hindered extremely. You have to write very, very, very slow. <clears throat> the only problem that I have with the um, rusting of the Zebra G nib 
it does rust, but here's the thing. You're not, you're, most of the time, you're going to be using a straight pen holder and not a fountain pen. You'll be using a straight pen holder to hold your Zebra G <clears throat> or an oblique pen holder to hold your Zebra G. And as soon as you're done using it, you'll wipe, you'll you'll have a paper towel like this. Okay, you'll have a little paper towel like this. This is Krishna black. You'll dip your little nib in. You'll use whatever's on your dip nib. Okay, and then you'll put a little bit of spit on the end of your napkin. Okay, just a little bit of spit, and you'll wipe it off. Make sure that you always clean your dip nibs. Now, this nib, this nib here, this is a Hunt 101. Most dip nibs only last calligraphers about a month. Maybe if that. This nib is almost two years old. Let that sink in for just a moment. If you take good care of your tools, they will last you a very long time. Hi, Pierre. How are ya? Are you having a nice day? I hope you're having a nice day. The problem with the dip nib is that you only get a couple of letters before you have to re-dip. See, and I just ran out right there. And I use a lot of pressure. There, <clears throat> in Spencerian, people usually do the first big letter. We'll do Pierre Gustafson. We usually make the first letter really big, and then we'll do little letters after that. Maybe get one or two words in, depending on how much flex you put down. See, I almost got two lines on there because I wasn't flexing very hard. <clears throat> so it really depends on how much flex you're using. It also depends on the nib. <clears throat> you can also, if you find that you're having a scratchy time, you can take a very old file, take a very old file that's been practically smooth this like I couldn't even sharpen my nails on this if I wanted to okay you take the nail file and then you go up you put it down on the paper like you're gonna write and you just do very light strokes in the direction that your nib is catching on and you rotate it ever so slightly 
to get it smooth in the direction that you want your pen to be smooth in and then you won't have a nib that grabs on the paper. Now what if you don't have a file? Sometimes I use an old butter knife because even though it's not rough, which you don't want things to be rough if you're going to smooth your nibs, you want it to be smooth so you just kind of do a little, do a couple little figure eights or circles on a smooth surface and it will smooth out your nib just enough and you will feel if it's grabbing in any direction. Same thing with a gold nib. If you find that your, your gold nib is grabbing in any direction, find a very smooth surface and just kind of do a couple of circles on it to um, smooth out whatever is going on with it. And then You should be golden. Cool. And the fact of the matter is, is between the boinga boinga and the dip nib, I actually prefer the dip nib. Now why is that? The dip nib is ever so slightly more stiff but the boinga boinga really gives you the flex. And it runs a little smoother. It has very smooth flow. And it gives a lot of interesting character. The <clears throat> G-nib has kind of a, a monoline, unless you really have take the time to give it the gas on the downstroke. See, this has a little bit of character on the downstrokes. Where this really doesn't have any, th any type of variation if you don't slow down. I saw somebody the other day sent me a letter. Their slant was like at a... 120 degree angle is weird. So, anyway, I hope that that helps with your question. If you guys have any other questions about any of the other pens that I have, I will try and answer those questions in video format as best as I can. Ah, oh, crap. I have to go to a meeting now.
So that is all for today. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed that one. I hope that you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, and I will be back very soon with another video. So take care until then. Also, if you're looking for a good vintage fountain pen, our friend Pierre Gustafson is right there. He sells vintage fountain pens. Go check his channel out. Have a great day. Oh, okay, love you, bye.